To understand the two-slit experiment, we are going to need a new quantum theory on light and time. In this diagram, light will expand in all possible directions as a wave particle function of quantized wave fronts. When the wave function reaches the screen with the two slits, the photon will react with the electrons of the screen. This will collapse the wave particle duality of the light, creating new quantum particles in space and new moments in time. The part of the wave that does not come in contact with the screen will expand in all possible routes, going through both slits as two light spheres of quantized wave fronts. Constructive and destructive interference between the waves will cause them to superimpose or cancel each other out. When this wave particle function comes in contact with the screen it will collapse, creating moments in time and quantum particles in the shape of an interference pattern. When the observer turns on a detector to determine which slit a photon passes through, the interference pattern collapses. This is because to observe the photon, we have to create a photon-electron coupling, collapsing each wave front into a new quantum particle that will have its own position in space and time. When we turn the detector off, we remove the photon-electron coupling, and in time the interference pattern will reform. Understanding time is the key to understanding the two-slit experiment. In this theory, the wave function represents the time continuum at the most fundamental level. Time only moves forward because the probability of the wave function only works one way. We always know the position or momentum of a quantum particle in the past. The uncertainty principle of quantum physics is the same uncertainty that the observer will have with any future event. Put very simply, the light emitted by an atom now is going to be absorbed by another atom later on, and this is the fundamental process that creates the time continuum. Every object in our universe will create its own time and space by collapsing the light waves of electromagnetic radiation into new quantum particles that will have their own position in space and time that the wave function never had before the collapse. It is because the observer can choose when and where to collapse a wave function that we have free will to create our own future. The wave particle duality of light or electromagnetic radiation is continuously creating a blank canvas for the observer that she or he can participate in. This is what Socrates called a sea of beauty. The individual observer as a group of atoms is the only true reference frame because they are creating their own time and space relative to their position and momentum. This is very difficult to visualize but in this oil painting of a geisha girl walking through sunlight the wave particle duality of the light will collapse as she walks through the rays of light. She will collapse the wave function into moments of time and space, creating her own space-time geometry. We therefore live in a universe of mortal space-times, and each space-time is governed by the Lorentz contraction of time. Because this is a continuous process at the same rate that light moves, the speed of light between the atoms will always be a universal constant independent of the motion of the source. If the observer does not collapse the wave function, the quantum particle will only have the momentum of its own particle wave function. At a fundamental quantum level, the observer is the observed within his or her own created space-time. Therefore, the more accurately we know the position of a quantum particle, the less certain we are of its momentum. And if we know its momentum very accurately, then we can't be quite sure where it is. This is because to observe the quantum particle, we create a photon-electron coupling, collapsing the particle wave function into a moment of time and space that is part of the observer's own created space-time. This can also explain why light is so beautiful when it strikes an object. It is because we are looking at a moment of pure creation of time and space. We have entanglement because the polarization will be set at the creation of each expanding wave front the wave front will expand in the form of a light sphere, and the polarization will remain the same for the entire surface of the light sphere, no matter how large it becomes. When the wave fronts of two spheres comes in contact, we, the wave fronts out of phase will cancel each other out, and the wave 
waves in phase will superimpose. The radiating energy will be entirely absorbed proportionally to the masses within the objects. This will cause an un unbalanced force and the two objects will resonate together in a process known as gravity. Because atoms consist mostly of empty space, electromagnetic radiation of short wavelengths, like X-rays, can penetrate the objects, and therefore every single part of matter can take part in the gravitational interaction. We have the inverse square law because the surface area of the light sphere increases with the square of the radius, thus the strength of the gravitational field is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. Because it is impossible to achieve absolute zero, everything is radiating electromagnetic radiation continuously, creating the universal dynamically evolving geometry of time in the form of ever-expanding spherical quantized wave fronts. The observer will feel this as the forward momentum of time, and will see patterns of a beautiful symmetry on every level of creation from seashells to spiral galaxies. The atoms will distort the geometry of space-time, creating mathematical patterns of every conceivable shape. The same basic method of pattern formation, the same mechanism of symmetry breaking, governs the whole universe of organic and non-organic matter. Only a slight distortion in the space-time symmetry will spiral out, creating the visual patterns of our universe. Therefore, the infinity of time is an innate property of matter, whatever form or shape it takes. And this is why momentum itself is frame dependent, and we have relativity. Even a child's toy spinning top will form its own space-time geometry, relative to its position and momentum, creating its own gravitational field. It is easy to see how our infinite sequence of whole numbers can represent the infinity of three-dimensional space, because the numbers can be used to represent three-dimensional shapes. But it is the irrational numbers that drop out of the whole number sequence that represent the never-ending expansion of time. In quantum atom theory, the irrational number pi is a physical constant and represents the expanding curvature of space-time. It is not just because it is random and carries on expanding forever, its position within the whole number system points towards its link with the forward momentum of time. In quantum physics it takes three quantum numbers to calculate the wave function, as it expands as an inverse volume of space. The number pi is in the calculations at almost every stage, representing the geometry of three-dimensional space-time. This theory is very simple, but I think it is also very beautiful. It can explain all the paradoxes of quantum mechanics. It also explains why light is a universal constant, and why we have the forward momentum of time. But above all this, we have the free will for the creative evolution of our own reality within the dynamically evolving universe of Einstein, and quantum mechanics and the classical mechanics of Newton are united 